Hey folks, and welcome back to another one of our production gear show and tell videos where today I'll be talking about the uh, Zacuto Gradical HD Electronic Viewfinder. So this unit here is the Gradical HD. It's a viewfinder that's designed to be rigged up to really any kind of camera that can give you a video out signal. Here it is um, hooked up to my GH5. I'm actually using the Zacuto cage as well. And the idea of it is that you're getting better control of your image using a variety of tools that's built into the processor of the viewfinder uh, and also just give you a superior image quality. Better than that you would find in your maybe your camera manufacturer's display units, whether that be the EVF or the viewfinder. Zacuto is going to be a much better quality and a much more accurate representation of the colors and the levels in the image essentially that what your cameras can really give you. It's been quite a few years since I played with anything Zacuto. Uh, Adam actually turned me on to them about five or six years ago. Uh, when we were playing with his Sony FS700. He has a his, he has that camera rigged up with a Zacuto uh, shoulder rig and a Zacuto EVF, and we used that quite a bit, but back then the tech wasn't quite as good with the EVFs as far as like lag goes. There was still like, a second or two delay that would make it real kind of disorienting to shoot high action stuff um, when you're moving the camera and things are kind of uh, trailing behind you. Since then, all of this tech has dramatically improved. It may have like one frame lag, but it's, it's not, enough to put any kind of hindrance on you. In the meantime, I've been using a small HD, like seven inch production field monitor. And this is a, this is a field monitor that I'd use um, on set for myself. Uh, if I use it outside, I have a little box that'd go in front of it to block out the sun, or sometimes I just kind of angle it to the side so a producer or director can see the image that I'm shooting. But the thing with that is it is seven inches. Mine is seven inches at least, or smaller versions, but mine was a little, a little too big to travel around with. So. When I do um, very controlled shoots, I would use that small HD, seven inch, and when I'd go kind of run and gun, travel stuff, I would take everything off and just use the camera's built-in display stuff. And over time, I've kind of learned to work with some of the um, shortcomings of the, the manufacturer's own displays. So flashback to earlier this year when I was doing some documentary work in Cuba and I was going run and gun in the very bright sunlight for hours and hours every day for about a week. Uh, I couldn't use the, um, the LCD display on the GH5 because it was just too bright. I couldn't see anything. So I was kind of resigned to just pop my eye into the, uh, the built-in viewfinder and kind of walking around all day with my eye and my head tilted uh, following the subjects and shooting uh, for hours like that. Uh, I came back from that trip with a, an injury. Uh, I've been spending the last couple of months in physical therapy. All that uh, kind of posture and that, that strain in my neck and shoulder just kind of wrecked havoc up here. And I've been doing a lot of uh, work to kind of reduce that general pain. And I thought, you know what, it's time to actually get something uh, like a viewfinder where I can kind of ergonomically uh, adjust myself and shoot with a, uh, a much more comfortable position that's not going to injure me. Uh, so kudos EVFs came back into my, uh, my purview and I wanted to check out some stuff and they sent me this uh, Gradical HD to try out for a little bit. So first let's talk about the image itself that you actually get in this viewfinder. So the display is a micro OLED display. Uh, each pixel is lit individually, which essentially means that each pixel can go into pure black. Uh, what that means is that you can get an increase in contrast to give you yourself uh, something much more representative of what your um, camera is gonna deliver to your editing system. Here are some stats on that display. So you can get an idea of the, uh, the color depth, the contrast ratio, the refresh rate, etc. Now I gotta say, going back and forth from the uh, the camera's display units to the EVF is actually a pretty remarkable quality jump. Not only are those levels super accurate, um, but just like the vibrancy and the color and everything just looks super crisp and clean. Uh, the the size of the display is actually just, it, it's kind of a sweet spot. Your eye's not searching around. Like on my, on my larger monitors, I'm kind of scanning around the entire image. This, you can get a feel for your entire frame uh, without too much eye strain. Uh, we had this whole thing rigged up for a short film that I, I directed and the, um, we were doing some stylized stuff with lights and color temperatures and being able to kind of manually uh, dial in the color temperature through the EVF to get the look, the, the look that I wanted to be the final look um, in camera as much, in, as much as possible and feeling like I can get that with this EVF was actually really cool. When I brought it back to the edit system, uh, most of my workers are already done because I was able to just dial in so much stuff because I knew I had that accurate display. And the frame rate of the display runs from essentially every variation uh, of ranging from 24 to 60 frames per second. Now, as far as the physical construction of this, um, here it is rigged up to the GH5 using the Zacuto cage, like I said. Normally I use a tilt of stuff, but you can kind of do this uh, setup essentially with any kind of cage that allows for rods and supports and rosettes. Here it is, I can adjust the rosettes, I can adjust the rods to get the uh, height and the, uh, the length that I want it at. 
Um, I think if I was to um, dial this into a run and gun rig, I would add something that would give me something uh, a little more diagonal. So right now everything is straight on. The, uh, the, uh, the EVF is straight on with the camera and walking around, I tend to do this. I tend to just bend my head a little bit uh, and look through it and use it that way. I'd kind of like to tilt it, uh, tilt it outwards so that my head would be straight on. This is all coming from my injury uh, paranoia now that I don't want to put any strain on my body. I kind of want everything to be as straight and as comfortable as possible without having to turn in or uh, you know, move my head to get my eye into that suction cup correctly. Uh, so I, that's one little addition I'd add, but you can use a cold shoe. You can just, there's all sorts of mounting points besides the rosette. Uh, so you can play around with different uh, variations of, of how you want to physically rig this up. You have your battery mount on the side here. Uh, and on top is where your ins and outs are. You have two HDMIs and two BNC connectors for SDI. Essentially, these are ins and outs. You can uh, throw your signal in from the camera and give it out to separate monitors, um, which whatever, whatever connector you choose. I had just normal HDMI here, but I think uh, you know you want your 90 degree ones to, to kind of give your your uh, your cable management a little bit more of a slimmer profile. Uh, in the back, you have your USB for updating your firmware and your power button, uh, and the LPE6 batteries. Um, you know, those are very popular batteries. I have about six of them. Each one lasted me about something more like three and a half to four and a half hours each with this thing on uh, all the time, uh, which is plenty. And if I didn't want to do the run and gun rig and I wanted to rig it up to my bigger unit, um, I actually go from an LPE6 to a, a DTAP power to the battery plate that powers everything on my camera. And with that, you're kind of just powering this thing for a very, very, very long time, longer than you'd ever need it for. Now let's move on to my favorite part of the CVF, and that is the uh, the built-in display tools. Now you have pretty much everything you can think of, uh, your vector scopes, your histograms, your waveforms, uh, your peaking, your exposure, uh, your, your zebras, uh, your false color. A couple of the more frequent ones that I use are things like the LUT import. So a lot of what I shoot, uh, I shoot on V-Log. I shoot in a flat profile, whether that be with this camera or with the C-Log, with the Canon uh, or S-Log. and um, I can give the I can give the uh, basically the computer of the EVF um, my data for my LUT and say this is what I want my colors to look like uh, or this is this is rather what my colors are going to look like in post production. Can you display that for me in here? And so you can load in those LUTs, uh, cycle through different ones, and give yourself a display LUT to look at just so you can give it a better idea of what your picture will look like when it's colored. Uh, that doesn't mean it's recording in that, it's still recording flat, it's just giving you that display. And so you can kind of play with that. You can actually build your own LUTs inside the system and then save them there or export them. Uh, if you do like a show LUT on the floor of, of something you're shooting and you wanna save that LUT and bring it into your uh, editing system afterwards, you can do that. Uh, I love working with LUTs, I love color correction and, and color grading. And so um, being able to play with those and, and load those into here uh, is pretty rad. Uh, another one that I use, uh, quite a bit, it's probably the most, my most used uh, exposure assist is what's called false color. Now for false color, I have that mapped to one of my function, one of my preset buttons here. You have four buttons plus a, uh, a little wheel or a little joystick here where you can add all sorts of shortcuts. One of those is reserved for my false color. False color basically turns your image psychedelic. Um, all the colors on the screen represent an IRE level that's charted at the bottom there. So I know if, if my camera hits a great skin tone of like 60 IRE, I can expose uh, and get that skin tone perfectly for 60 IRE. Um, I use that, like I said, all the time. We shot a whole short film that was a lot of green screen and we needed the green screen to be very evenly lit. We couldn't have any variations in the color and the IREs jumping all the place. So we would turn on false color and make sure that all parts of the green screen were lit at the exact same uh, levels so that keying out that stuff in post would be, would be easy. That's kind of a, a, perfect, uh, a perfect use for the false color. Uh, aside from just getting a, an overall view of what everything is exposing at, on your image. It's something much more accurate than say, like waveforms where you're kind of getting a chart that's graphing the whole image and you kind of have to guess what those uh, points on the graph is. False color is pure visual representation of your IRE levels throughout the image. So why I do still love my small HD seven inch field monitor, I'm kind of falling in love with using EVFs. Uh, as my style of shooting kind of evolves or develops and changes different ways, I find that I need to add more um, tools that will help me uh, achieve the look that I want uh, when I'm working on shoots where I really need to make sure I do deliver exactly what we are uh, you know, trying to, uh, trying to capture. This helps in that accuracy and also just my health. I don't want to have any more injuries. I don't want to go to physical therapy again. Uh, I want to keep uh, 
keep keep care of my body. Um, running gun shooting, especially documentary style work, can be hell on the body, and you kind of need to make sure that you're set up comfortably so that the next day of shooting isn't uh, you know diminishing returns, and so you don't have to go back to physical therapy, and so you can uh, kind of keep working and keep shooting and stay healthy. So like I said, about five years ago, I probably would not have gone for an EVF. Um, the tech just wasn't there. There wasn't enough tools built in and the lag was just too much for me to handle. Um, now you have like a dual processor built into this thing that gives you an insane amount of display tools that all help with your image. Uh, the one frame delay is barely noticeable. It doesn't really affect uh, my shooting at all. And things like the, uh, just the amazing diopter and the, the anti-fog glass on this thing, it just means I have a clear image, a comfortable, comfortable ergonomic position and like I said those tools at my disposal um, where I would need to be flipping through menus on uh, like a small HD or uh, doing lots of calibration this thing just has everything kind of built in uh, if you're interested in the EVFs Zacuto this is this is kind of the top of the line the Zacuto Gradical HD but they do different versions of these um, EVFs that you can kind of build out to what tools that you need so check out the site see if there's something that kind of fits your needs your workflow um, and you can kind of build out to what tools uh, best serve you that's about it. Thank you for guys for letting me geek out about some camera gear for a bit. Again, this is the Zacuto Gradical HD. Uh, I will see you guys next time. And remember, scopes never lie. Bye.